By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are in Munich, Germany for the Alpha 40 League Europe Tournament. And this is their finals. And the cool thing is, I believe they want to do this annually. So if you're interested in this format, um, I'll put some contact information to them, to their Instagram in the description below. So you can click on there and then you can check them out on Instagram. Maybe, you know, send them a message about uh, whatever plans they may have in the future to organize tournaments. Um, and in today's match, like I said, it's a final match and it's going to be between Dennis, who's on red and white. It's burn. He's got Orcish artillery, COP reds. It's pretty cool. He's got an iron star, which works an amazing in alpha 40 and he's taking on anthony and anthony is playing mono black and mono black is always a beautiful deck especially when it's black bordered and all alpha now uh before i continue with these decks because i've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks so before i continue with the deck deck i would first like to point out that as always you can also choose to first go to the games check out the deck decks later i know some people prefer to do it this order the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps one of the timestamps reads MTG Games. And in that same description below, you can also find more information about this special rule set because they are uh, playing according to the Alpha 40 League rules. So if you're curious about what does that actually mean, if you want to know, again, check out the description below. I will put a link there to the rules so you can find out more about the rules. And like I said, if you want to join their tournament next year, again, check out the description below for a link to their Instagram so you can reach out to them. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of the mono black player, Anthony. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Anthony. So he's playing mono black. I mean, isn't it just beautiful? Mono black, alpha only. I mean, this is what it is. It's very straightforward. I love it. I think it's really cool. Uh, let's just first check out the, the creature base of this deck. We see, of course, a beautiful nightmare. You need a, If you play mono black, you need a nightmare. And how beautiful does it look, this black bordered copy? So uh, nightmare is a flying creature that has power and toughness equal to the amount of swamps you control. So in a deck like this, it means usually means, unless you use a soul ring to ramp it out early, but it usually means you've got a 6-6 six, six for 6 and flying, right? So that's huge in this format. Then we also see Sengir Vampires talking about flyers and also Hypnotic Spectres. So they're all quite good. The Hypnotic Spectre, of course, an absolute all-star. We also see Dark Ritual in this deck. So you could go turn one Dark Ritual into your Hypnotic Spectre. I do believe in this matchup, because it's got two toughness, it's gonna be a little bit vulnerable because you have the Lightning Bolts to deal with and you have the Orcish Artillery. But more about that later, of course, when we discuss the deck of the opponent. Um, and then we also see a full playset of Black Knights. Again, maybe a little bit vulnerable to that uh, red removal. But what makes Black Knight so good is that protection from white, meaning, meaning you cannot kill it with a Swords to Plowshares. I'm also liking the weaknesses in this deck, right? They can uh, take care of a lot of creatures in the format. I mean, think about it. You've got a Sarah Angel, right? You may feel pretty good, but with the weakness, all of a sudden it's just a 2-3 flyer. It's not that great anymore, especially when it has to face a Sengir Vampire. Um, we also see a one-off Pestilence. I think Pestilence is still pretty much underestimated in uh, in Mono Black and in Old School in general. So it's just great to see it here uh, in this deck. I'm, I'm looking forward to see it in action. I also like the combination between Pestilence and Drain Life. Because Pestilence is typically one of those cards that's good when you're ahead on life. But when you're low on life or lower than your opponent, it's just not that good anymore. But with Drain Life, you can make that swing, right? You can get your opponent lower and you, of course, gain life with your Drain Life. So Drain Life in a mono black deck, very powerful. Not surprised to see a full four here in this deck. And then we have that beautiful one-off Royal Assassin. I'm liking it, right? We don't see Paralyze here, though. Could have gone for, for example, instead of Weakness, go for Paralyze. I kind of get it. I think I think that you know weakness. It just it does it. It does the job. You know minus two minus one. It just does it. Paralyze in some circumstances quite good. Maybe if you combine it with sinkhole um, and of course with royal. But maybe in this case the weakness works better than uh, than the uh, pestilence. Let me know in the comments below. In alpha forty, would you go for paralyze over weakness or would you go for weakness over paralyze? I would be curious to hear about uh, about your opinion on this. I don't play Alpha 40 a lot. When I do, it's usually with borrowed cards. So I'm not very uh, experienced in this format. So I'm genuinely curious to know what you have to say about this. Okay, so Mono Black here, looking like a very powerful deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. 
And here we see the deck of Dennis. So Dennis has a white and red deck. And I mean, the first thing that I notice here are the six orcish artilleries. So remember, this is according to the Alpha 40 League rules. So you can play with more than just four copies of a card. If you want to know more about the rules, please check out the description below because there's a link to the Alpha 40 League rules. Um, so in this case, he's playing with six orcish artilleries. And I mean, this card is one red and one to cast an alpha. Normally it's two red and one, but there are a few cards that have different casting costs. And guess what? If you're playing alpha, you're gonna follow the casting cost that's on the card. So that means that this card is insanely good, right? It's two mana for a one, three creature, one red and one. And then you can tap it to deal two damage to any target, but it also deals three damage to you. Do you wanna take that damage? Of course not. And that is why you're playing with Circle of Protection Red. So Circle of Protection Red is gonna protect you from that damage. And then you can just start killing your opponent or killing the creatures of your opponent. Now remember, his opponent today, the Mono Black player, is playing Black Knight, is playing Gymnotic Spectre. So he can use his artillery to kill those creatures. He can use it to kill the Royal Assassin. So I mean, this card can really do work. Now, um, the problem is, of course, if you don't have a Circle of Protection, uh, red on the board, but the good news again here for Dennis is he's playing against a mono black player, meaning he doesn't really have a solution to enchantments. So if you can get your COP red and your orcish artillery on the board, you're in a really, really good position. Another card I want to highlight in this deck is the Iron Star, because Iron Star, these kind of cards work differently in Alpha 40 League rules, because you can activate it as often as you want when you cast a single spell. So let me just explain that. We've got Iron Star. It's one to cast for this artifact, Poly Artifact. Whenever a player casts a red spell, you may pay one mana. If you do, you gain one life. So in the old rules, what you could do is if you cast one Orcish Artillery, you can tap your Iron Star, use the ability of your Iron Star, I should say, multiple times. So I can tap one mana for one life, but I can also tap a second mana to again gain life from the same artillery. So let's say I've got five mana. I'm using a red and one of those mana to cast my Orcish Artillery. I've got three mana left. If I then have an Iron Star on the battlefield, I can tap those three mana to gain three life from that single artillery. So I mean, Iron Star in Alpha 40 is insanely powerful. It's a life maker. It's really, really good. Now, when we look at the rest of the deck, we see Earthquake, again, works really well with COP Red. We see Lightning Bolts, makes sense. We also see Juggernauts, one of my favorite cards. I just love to see an Alpha Juggernaut. It's so cool. 5-3 for four mana, has to attack every turn. It does what it does. It's just a, it's a card that wants to deal pain, right? So really cool to see that in this deck. I don't think it's gonna be that good in this matchup, but still really nice to see the card. I'm also loving that Wheel of Fortune. That's gonna do a lot of work. And we have an Alpha Chaos Orb. Now that's very exciting. Hopefully we're gonna see that card flip. Okay, so this is the deck of Dennis. It's looking very, very good. We've also looked at the deck of his opponent, Anthony, and that only means one thing. We are ready for the finals of the Alpha 40 League Europe. Here we go. Game number one here at the Alpha 40 League in Munich, Germany. On the right, we see Anthony on the play with Mono Black. And remember, it's Alpha 40 rules, so you draw when you're on the play, which is quite nice. Dennis here playing white and red with Orcish Artillery, starting with a mountain. Here we see a Black Knight by Anthony. And a pass turn. Are we going to see a bolt? Yep, there's the bolt. He's already putting it into the bin. So that's, that's where you want to be. When you're Dennis, you know, you want to have those answers. And of course, you want to have your turn to Orcish Artillery. Yeah, so this is kind of insane. Of course, the card normally costs two red and one, but in uh, Alpha, it's only one red and one, making the card very playable. Now we see Anthony already a little bit uh, in trouble here. Maybe he's got a Hypnotic Spectre, but you don't want to play that into that uh, Orcish Artillery. So just passing the turn here. There we see a Mountain. And there's the attack, just for one. So I'm gonna put to Anthony on 19. Dennis playing out here, another Orcish Artillery passing the turn. Yeah, this is really bad news for Anthony because you know you, now you can't even play out a uh, Sengir Vampire anymore because he can kill it with the two Artilleries. Needs to get rid of some of the Artilleries ASAP. We see a Pestilence here. Okay, that is quite good. He could do Pestilence for three next turn, destroy both Artilleries. And if you're Dennis, you need white and a disenchant. That is really the most important thing here. White and a disenchant or else you're probably going to lose the pestilence here. 
There's another mountain, no white source. So Dennis is in trouble. Probably just going to attack for two. Going to put him on 17, passing the turn. So Anthony kind of knows what to do. Going to draw a card for turn. I mean, this Pestilence is absolutely perfect. A line he could have here is drop a Swamp. Pestilence for three. Kill everything on the board and then play out a creature. But let's see. I mean, do you want to let Dennis untap here? Exactly. No, you don't. So using the Pestilence for three, that means three damage to each player and each creature on the board. And of course, the Pestilence is destroyed immediately when there are no more creatures. And that's it for Anthony passing the turn. He's on 14, Dennis on 17. But this was a really, really nice turn for Anthony here. Getting the two for one, getting rid of those artilleries, kind of opening up a lot of cards in his deck again. But remember, Dennis playing with six artilleries. There are four more in his deck, and it's only 40 cards. Tapping three red. Oh, there's a Wheel of Fortune. Loving it. And of course, Anthony being tapped out. So he's got a discard. We see some swords going to the bin. A lot of drain lives gone. That is unfortunate. I think those drain lives can be quite important in this matchup. But he's going to lose three of his four drain lives, I believe. So that's a pretty big hit for Anthony. Of course, he is getting seven cards back in return. Let's see if we're going to see another artillery here. Yep, there's another one here from Dennis. Passing the turn. So that's artillery number three of six hitting the board. We see a soul ring here for Anthony. One of the cards in hand. Now remember, Anthony only plays with one pestilence. That card is now gone. His other way to get rid of the Orcish Artilleries are with the Drain Lives, but also three of those are already in the bin, so it could be quite tough here for Anthony to deal with the Artilleries. Okay, there's one of the Drain Lives. I think this is the last Drain Life, if I'm not mistaken. So he's going to go up to 17, taking care of the Artillery, passing the turn back here to Dennis. And I think if you're Dennis, you're like, okay, he's, he's lost the Pestilence, he's lost all his Drain Life, so now if I play an Artillery, it's going to stick. Going to tap four mana here. There's a Juggernaut. Ooh, that is good timing. Remember, uh, Anthony also lost quite a lot of weaknesses when uh, that Wheel of Fortune got played. Is he going to take five next turn? That's the question here. I mean, if it can play out a double Black Knight, that would be ideal. You can double block Black Knight having first strike. But perhaps that's a bit of a stretch. Looks like he's in the tank here trying to figure out a way out of this. He's on 17, of course. Could take a hit of, uh, with the Juggernaut. Would put him on 12. Still pretty high. Going through his hand here. We can't really see what he has, so we'll just have to wait and see. So I believe there were about 22 players that joined uh, this first uh, Alpha 40 uh, League Europe tournament. There we see a Sol Ring. And they had a trophy and everything. It was really uh, organized quite well. Tapping five. Are we going to see a Sengir? There's a Sengir Vampire. I mean, Anthony also plays. Oh, there's more to come. Okay, there's a Black Knight. Passing the turn. There's also a, um, a single Nightmare in the deck of Anthony. That will be quite good now as well. Two sorts of Plowshares already in the bin for Dennis, of course. Only having, I believe, two in his deck. Or was, was it three? I'm trying to remember the deck photo. I believe only two sorts of plowshares. And they're now in the bin. There's another white source. So perhaps could play out a Sarah Angel playing with two in the deck. Remember, he has to attack with the Juggernaut. And then I really wonder if Anthony's going to block or say, you know what, I'm just going to take five, drop to 12, and I'll just attack you for six next turn. No, he's going to put it in front. He didn't even hesitate there. <laughs> didn't need to think about it at all. Probably thinking, you know what, I'm playing against Burn. I don't want to take any combat damage. Tapping five. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel? That would be a little problematic. Yep, because the Sarah can fly over the Black Knight. So now there's the untap. I mean, does this easy block by Anthony mean that he's got another Sengir in hand? There's the attack for two. 
It's going to put Dennis on 15. Okay, he's got a hypnotic specter in hand there. Not really useful at the moment. I mean, if that's your only option, of course, play it out, but it's not great. Three cards in hand, I believe, for Anthony. So again, in the tank here, kind of meaning that probably he doesn't have a Sengir in hand or else he would just play it out without thinking too much about it. Going to tap two black. Tap four black. Okay, what are we going to see? What could he play out for four black? Tapping out everything, Hypnotic Spectre and a Sengir. Okay, so he did have another Sengir in hand. So that kind of explains that quick block earlier. And I mean, this is a difficult position for Dennis here to be in because, I mean, you don't really want to attack with the Sarah because you don't want to trade it with the Sengir because then, of course, Dennis can attack you next turn with the... Uh, sorry, Anthony can attack you next turn with this Hypnotic Spectre. But perhaps Dennis has an answer. I mean, Hippie being too toughness, being quite vulnerable against a deck with bolts. And remember, this is a 40-card format, so it kind of makes sense here that you see Anthony going through his deck Think, okay, what do I still have? And I believe all his drain lives, for example, are already in his graveyard. So 15 versus 17 here. Dennis is uh, Dennis's turn. Ooh, this is good. This Orcish Artillery. This can really do business. This is Orcish Artillery number four hitting the board. That means two more in his deck. And I mean, this artillery can kill the Hypnotic Spectre. It can kill the Black Knight. A big problem. And I don't think Anthony has that many answers left in his deck for the artillery. So this could be a game changer. Tapping two more. Are we going to see another artillery perhaps? Okay, there is a Chaos Orb. Oh, are we going to see an Orb Flip? Are we going to see an Orb Flip? But we are going to see an Orb Flip. It looks like he's going to flip here on the Sengir Vampire. That makes perfect sense. Oh, it is a hit, but almost a miss. But it is a hit. Oh, that was a close one. Now, of course, he can attack with the Sarah. It's looking very dire here for Anthony. I mean, he had that play with the Pestilence. That was brilliant. But after that, it got harder and harder for Anthony. Two cards in hand for him. Going to draw card number three. Pestilence is gone. It's in the graveyard. All his drain lives, I believe, are in the graveyard as well. That's going to make it really tough for him to get back into this. I mean, a Nightmare would be really good. Nightmare is kind of the card I guess you want to you wanna have right now. Also, two Sengir Vampires already in the bin, playing three total. I mean, also a Royal Assassin is not going to help you here because if you played a Royal... Dennis can simply get rid of it with the artillery. So now Dennis also inquiring about the cards in the graveyard. Probably looking at the drain lives. There's the attack with the Black Knight. I mean, could block it on the artillery, but do you want to? Do you want to take that risk? I can imagine you say, you know what? I'm just going to go to 13. I really want to keep my artillery alive. I mean, we've seen the deck lists, of course. We know, we know that you can safely block it here, but, you know, can you be 100% sure when you're Dennis? That's the question. Dennis, of course, going here through the graveyard, looking at, okay, how many drain lives, how many weaknesses? Taking some time to think. I think, I think the end result will be that he takes the damage. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, again, life's a... Uh, oh, it's going to block. Yep, it's going to do it. And this, of course, the right decision. Because Anthony, I believe, has nothing here to, uh, to then destroy. The artillery doesn't play, for example, with Howl from Beyond.
It's actually a, a combination of cards I've always liked, Howl from Beyond together with Black Knight because of that first strike. Yeah, Anthony really in the tank here, realizing, okay, if I just pass the way as is, I'm going to be in trouble because he's going to use artillery to kill one of my two creatures. He's going to attack with Viscera. He needs to do something. The question is, can he do something? Two cards in hand, or three perhaps, hard to see. Okay, there's another Hypnotic Spectre. I mean, that kind of makes sense because you can double block the Sarah. And if you're Dennis, you have to, to choose. I guess one of the things you can do when your Dennis is attack with the Sarah, wait for him to announce blocks, and if he's going to double block before damage is dealt, kill, kill one of the Hypnotic Spectres with your artillery, and then the other one gets killed because it blocks the Sarah Angel. Now, of course, I don't know how combat works in Alpha. I'm really a noob when it comes to Alpha rules, so maybe it doesn't work that way, but if it would be regular rules, that's how it would work. So Dennis here uh, taking his time. Remember, this is, of course, the finals. Best of three here, first game. Who's going to win this Alpha 40 League Europe Tournament? There's the attack, 4-4 four, four Angel coming in. I mean, this is rough for Anthony, right? There's not much you can do. I mean, exactly, just take the damage, go to 9. Again, if you double block, I think it's just going to kill one of those with the artillery. The other one gets killed by the Angel, and you lose two creatures. It's not a solution. You could consider jumping, I guess. But also, that's not ideal because it means you're going to lose a creature to the Angel, and you're probably going to lose a creature to the artillery as well. There we see a red being tapped. Okay, it's a soul ring, not another bolt. So it could have been worse, I guess. One card left in hand here for Dennis. And I believe also only one card, or are they two cards? It's so hard to see for Anthony. So yeah, Dennis really taking his time. I wonder what that one card in hand is. He's on 15, Anthony on 9. Perhaps thinking about using the soul ring, or sorry, the artillery if he wants to use it main or not. Okay, what is he going to do? Tap, tap, tap. A really big earthquake, perhaps? Yep, there's an earthquake. Is this an earthquake for 9? I think it is. Okay, Dennis winning it here with that earthquake for 9. But I think even without the Earthquake, he would have taken this down for sure. So now both players are going to shuffle up and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Anthony, of course, on the play after losing that first game. Has to win it here to stay in it. If he's going to lose, we've got Dennis as our champion here at the Alpha 40 League Tournament. Europe League, I should say, Tournament. So there is a Swamp passing the turn to Dennis. Oh, there's the Iron Star. So I talked a little bit about the Iron Star in the deck deck. I mean, the way this works in Alpha is so cool. Whenever you play a red card or an opponent, of course, you can pay one to gain a life. And you can do that multiple times. So just by playing one red spell, you can like gain like, what, five, six life if you've got enough mana, of course. Here we see a COP red passing the turn. Anthony played a Black Knight. So that Black Knight can start doing some damage. That's good news. Not so good news is that COP Red. I mean, if he starts now playing his Orcish Artilleries, you've got serious problems. Ooh, we also see a Royal Assassin there. He is going for the Hippie. I believe that was a Royal Assassin. I would have considered going for the Royal Assassin, actually. But uh, going for the Hypnotic instead. Of course, Hypnotic also a very strong card. There we see him tapping three... There is a Lightning Bolt on the Hypnotic and gaining two life. So here we see him using that uh, Iron Star twice. Going back up to 20. Yeah, the Iron Star is really a tough card here to play against. I guess first point of business for Anthony here is just to attack for two, put him on 18. Again, you know, and then uh, try to build back up. Try to maybe uh, play another Hypnotic or, of course, if you have it, play that Royal Assassin.
So taking his time here, attacking for two. Dennis dropping to 18. Another swamp. Four swamps for him. I'm hoping that we're going to see the Nightmare, by the way. Such a beautiful creature. Of course, that one's six to cast, so we need to wait a little bit longer. Going to tap two black, it seems. Note three. There's the Royal passing the turn. So you basically want to have the Royal, royal Assassin on the board before you see the Orcish Artillery, right? Because as soon as the Artillery is there, it can kill your Royal on the spot. So you want to have your Royal first. So that part of the plan worked out here for Anthony. Now let's see what Dennis can do. Playing another white source uh, planes here. So two planes, two mountains, a COP red and an iron star on the board for Dennis. He's on 18. Thinking about what to do next here. So I'm not quite sure how many cards in hand passing the turn back here. This is good news for Anthony. No Orcish Artillery yet. And of course you don't want to play that out. Or actually, actually you could play that out even though there's a, there's a Royal on the board. Simply means that it gets killed. You can only use it once with the tap ability, but still. There's the attack for three. It's going to drop to 15. Can Anthony put some more pressure on the board? If he has another Swamp, perhaps he can play a Sengir Vampire, for example. Yep, just passing the turn as well. So a completely different game than what we saw in uh, game one. And Dennis now on 15. Playing another plane, so he could play a Sarah Angel if he has it, of course. I believe he's got five cards in hand. Okay, look at this. He's going to cast something. He's going to tap four. going to tap five. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel? An Orcish Artillery? Okay, and then, of course, gain three life with the Iron Star. It's really nice to see here. For, also, for people who are not used to watching the Alpha games, it's really cool that a card like Iron Star gets really, really good in this format. I love it. It's a card you never see in any other old school format, only in Alpha. I guess Orgish Artil Artillery is also a very rare sight to, uh, to see outside of Alpha 40. And now it's Anthony's turn to, uh, to think deep and hard about what to do. Ideally, you want to play a Swamp and maybe a Drain Life on the Artillery. That would be the best. But I guess he doesn't have that option or else he would have done it already. It's kind of a no-brainer. If you can do that, you would do that. Another line could be or to attack with the Black Knight. If he blocks, two damage is marked on it. And then you play a weakness and then it actually dies. Because it takes away a point of toughness. And I mean, I would attack regardless with the Black Knight just to see what he does. Remember in game one, Dennis did decide to block. There's a tap for two black. Okay, there's another black knight. Going to tap two more. Another black knight. Wow, look at that. Passing the turn here. And I believe they're putting the creature so far apart is because of those chaos orbs. And chaos orb simply destroys everything it hits. So that's why they're paying so much attention to where they put their cards. Remember, Dennis is playing with the Chaos Orb. Playing another mountain here. If he has, um, if he has an Earthquake, that would be so good on this board. I mean, Earthquake for two destroys the board of Anthony and actually also can uh, give life to Dennis because of that Iron Star. So that would be pretty sick. So let's see what Dennis can do. Gonna tap the planes. Oh, does he have an earthquake? That would be so, that would be just a killer for Anthony. I actually hope he doesn't. Okay, he's gonna untap again. Gonna tap a white, another white and a red. What are we gonna see? Earthquake for two? Oh, 
Oh, no. Wheel of Fortune. <sighs> I'm kind of happy with this because Earthquake for two was almost end game. And look at that. Anthony losing double, um, double Sangy Vampire here and that Pestilence. That is unfortunate. I feel Pestilence can be a very important card in this matchup simply because it can get rid of multiple Orcish Artilleries. Of course, now the Pestilence is not that great because you're going to kill your own Royal, basically wipe your own board to get rid of one artillery, so you wouldn't do that. But later in the game, it could be quite important. But anyway, they're gone now, so let's see what Dennis can do with the new seven cards in hand. It, it's always exciting, you know, when somebody plays a draw seven. Gonna tap the mountain here, tap the plains. Are we gonna see another Orcish artillery? Yes, we do. Okay, and now this is interesting. Dennis can choose to play his one, uh, can choose to use his one uh, Orcish Artillery that's already in the game, for example, in the end step of, uh, of Anthony, to kill the Royal Assassin. In response, Anthony can use his Royal to kill that Artillery, and then at the end of the story is that both creatures die, and then Dennis ends up with one Orcish Artillery that he can keep using. And remember, he's got a COP Red on the board as well. So this is a huge problem for Anthony. And this is where that Pestilence could have gone in. Just like we saw in, in game one, Anthony had that perfect play with Pestilence destroying the artilleries of Dennis. But now that uh, Pestilence is in the bin. So again, Anthony kind of with the back against the wall here. So trying to find out a line where he actually has a chance, but it's, it's looking very bad for him. Yeah, gonna go all in here, just attacking. That, that makes sense. What else can you do? Anthony gonna block one of the two Black Knights. Or is he gonna block both here? We'll see. Let's see how much damage he's gonna take. I believe he kind of signaled that he's gonna block one of those. Yeah, gonna take four, gonna drop to 14. There's another Swamp. Are we gonna see a Drain Life, for example, or a Weakness on that Artillery? So 14 life now for Dennis, but I believe it doesn't matter much with that Iron Star. Can easily gain more life again. Okay, there's a Soul Ring. Not going to change much. Anthony needs to get rid of one of the two Orgish Artilleries. Tap a black, tap the Soul Ring. So two floating, one black and two colorless floating. Tap three, what are we gonna see? Oh yeah, there's a drain life. Drain life for three. Yeah, this is this is a big deal. This is gonna go up to 23. Orcish artillery is gonna die. He's gonna take uh, one point of mana burn as well. So he's gonna go back to 22. And now he's gonna pass the turn. And I wonder, are we gonna see? Yeah, we are gonna see the artillery. And then, of course, in response, Anthony is going to kill the artillery. And both creatures die. That makes sense. And, of course, uh, two points of damage. No, no damage, I guess, because it doesn't resolve for Dennis here from his own artillery. So he's going to stay on 14, 22 for Anthony. Another planes. I mean, this is well done by Anthony, right? I mean, you got rid of the artilleries. That's pretty crucial, especially with that COP red on the board. You're left with three creatures yourself. That's pretty good. Now, let's see what Dennis can do in response. If he can just play out one single red spell, he can gain a lot of life again with the Iron Star. He's got another artillery in hand there. Wow, that's really good. And a Sarah Angel. That hand is full of action. Two Sarah Angels, I believe. So first he's going to play an Artillery and gain three life from it. Wow, that Iron Star is doing so much work. It's insane. Another Artillery. Passing the turn. Wow. So, I mean, Anthony worked really hard to get rid of those two Artilleries. And now two more are back again. Remember, he's playing six in total. So still two in his deck. And I mean, these Artilleries are really dominating this finals here. Such a good card. Again, an alpha, only one red and one to cast. It's just amazing. With the COP red, it's going to be so painful next turn for Anthony. All he can do, I think, here is it's just going to go all in with the Black Knights. 
I hope he's got like a weakness in hand or perhaps another drain life. So Anthony again in the tank. He did a really good job last turn to get rid of the two artilleries, but now there are two artilleries again. Can he get rid of them one more time? That's a big question. I mean, look at him think. He's like, oh, man. I wonder, by the way, if Ray's Dead is a good card in this format. There's the attack with the Black Knights. Anime Dead could be quite interesting. I mean, it is a creature-heavy format, I believe, Alpha 40. There's the attack with the Black Knights. So 2-2 First Strikers, protection from white. So one of the things that Dennis can do is simply block two, take two damage, go to 15. Or is he going to take all of them? He's going to take all of the damage. Does, don't want to take, uh, doesn't, sorry, doesn't want to take the risk to block one and then run into a weakness. And that makes sense knowing, of course, that he's got the Iron Star to gain life, knowing that he's got the COP red to protect himself from the damage that the artillery uh, inflict. I mean, he's in a really good position here. Anthony needs to do more than just play out the swamp. He needs something. It would be really cool to see, uh, for example, uh, a nightmare now hitting the board. He's got six black, so that would be a 6-6 six, six flyer. That would be pretty spectacular. And remember, because Dennis has two Orcish artilleries, he can deal four damage to any target. So you don't want to play a Sengir Vampire at the moment. Oh, there's an Hypnotic. Wow. One floating still. Going to tap two more. Are we going to see another Hypnotic? Another Black Knight. So he's really now trying to kind of flood the board. Oh, a Demonic Tutor. Ooh, it gets interesting. Playing a Demonic Tutor. What can he look up? I mean, Pestilence already in the graveyard. Could go for another Drain Life. Could go for a Nightmare. I mean, am I, does he have another option, another good option? Am I forgetting something? I would be tempted to go for Drain Life here. The problem is he doesn't have a card that can kill multiple creatures. He does, but it's already in the graveyard. That's a Pestilence, of course. Only playing with one Royal. It's also in the graveyard. Of course, Royal not being very good right now on the board. I think Nightmare or Drain Life would be your best options, thinking about his list. And now he's shuffling up again. I really wonder what he picked. Is it going to get him back into this? Remember, he's already one game down. If he loses this, then Dennis is our champion and Anthony is the runner-up. If Anthony wins this, then we're going to go to a final third game to decide who's going to win the Alpha 40 League Europe Tournament here in uh, Munich, Germany. There's the pass turn, so perhaps it's a drain life, who knows? Or, of course, a nightmare. Passing the turn back here to Dennis. Dennis can start doing some work now with the artilleries. I mean, he can wait with that, of course. Doesn't have to do it in his own turn. I wonder if he's going to tap more mana to, for example, cast a uh, Sarah Angel here. Tapping five, so we're probably going to see a Sarah. Yep, there's the Sarah Angel. So that Sarah, of course, is a great blocker for the Hypnotic Spectre. Is he now already going to use his Orcish Artillery? You don't really have to, right? I guess you just want to keep him untap, pass the turn to your opponent, and then when he attacks, you can decide, am I going to use it? Am I going to, you know, what am I going to target? Etc. Etc. You've got three lands untapped. You use your COP red as well. Yeah, exactly. Passing the turn. This makes perfect sense. And I mean, this is such a tough matchup for Anthony. Those artilleries are so difficult to deal with. This is where you just want to play with terror, right? You've got weaknesses in your deck, but you'd rather just have a terror. Just just terror those cards. Get rid of them. 
Terra, of course, having the downside that you cannot play it on artifact creatures. There's another Swamp. Two cards in hand, I believe, for Anthony. Now remember, he just played the Tutor, so I really wonder what he looked up with the Tutor. I mean, I assume we're going to find out. Or does he have three cards in hand, by the way? Two or three. Again, hard to see. Beautiful, by the way, those Black Knights on the board. One of them signed by uh, the artist Jeff Mengus. I had the pleasure of uh, meeting him twice already. Once at NoobCon in Gothenburg and once at the Often Troll Cup in uh, Leovarde. There's the attack. Wow, going in it for 10. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. This is pretty crucial. So now Dennis is in that position. Am I going to shoot something down with my artilleries? I mean, you want to block the Hypnotic on the Sarah, right? That's kind of a no-brainer. Then I guess you just want to kill two Black Knights, take four. Is that the way to go? Again, I'm not quite sure how it works now for 40 rules. Can he simply block the Black Knight and tap the artillery to use it to kill another Knight? That would be ideal. Because then he doesn't even have to take any damage. He could block two Black Knights with the artillery and then tap those artilleries to kill both of the Black Knights before taking damage. Yeah, so here we see him first blocking the Hypnotic Spectre. He's going to block one of the Black Knights, it seems. He can block the other. I believe he can do it that way, and then he doesn't even take any damage. And I, I get this play by Anthony, because you've got to do something. If you do nothing, you're going to lose for sure. And now we see him activate the artilleries, and of course using his COP red so he doesn't take any damage. Yeah, this is so incredibly brutal for Anthony. Okay, so he is going to take... Okay, so he's going to take two damage from one of the Black Knights. Going to drop to nine. So at least Anthony managed to deal some damage. But of course, it's a horrible exchange for him. But he has to do it here. He's really with his uh, he's back against the wall with those artilleries. Three cards in hand. And this is, for example, where a disc would be really good. That's why I really like a disc in Mono Black, because it can, it can solve the answers. I, of course, love to play uh, Mono Blue, and also in my Mono Blue deck, I have in the sideboard two discs. So Anthony here, three cards in hand. I believe one of those is a Sengir. But I mean, even that Sengir, it's not safe. He's got two Orcish Artillery's. He can deal four damage to the Sengir. It's going to die. I mean, things are looking really, really good here for Dennis. Three cards in hand for him. And I believe four cards in hand for Dennis, by the way. Three cards in hand for, for Anthony. Oh, he's going to go for a huge drain life. And I wonder what he's going to target with the drain life. Of course, he's going to target the life total of Dennis here. This is a drain life for nine. He can win it here on the spot. Oh, is, this, is he winning it here? You see Dennis looking at it. He's like, are you winning it here with your drain life? Or is he missing one point? He's missing one point, I believe. He's going to go to one. Oh, he's missing one final point. It took a moment for me to realize, of course, the dark casting of Dark Ritual is also costing a black. So you cast a ritual for three black, then you use one black and two from the soul ring, I guess. You got to take mana burn as well. And then you can play it for, for seven, no, for eight. Oh man, that is tough for Anthony, so close. Now he has to, if, if he top decks a drain life, he can still win it. But I think that's one of his only outs because now Dennis is really going to take over. He was already taking over, but now it's going to get even worse. That is a Sarah Angel with a lot of glare on it. So he can swing in now at least for four. But that's not an issue for Anthony. He's on 29, but he's going to drop to 25. The problem here, or of course, those Orcish Artilleries with the COP Red. I think if you're Dennis, you really need to, to try to get like cast some red spells to gain some life of Iron Star. 
So he's going to kill both of the Black Knights here. Passing the turn. So Anthony in top decking mode. Can he find a pestilence? Uh, sorry, a um, uh, drain life. That is the big question. If he finds a drain life from the top, he wins it here. We have a 1-1. If he doesn't, there's a pass. I mean, he's still on 25, but it's going to be tough looking, uh, going through his graveyard there. I believe I saw two more drain lives, so three drain lives in total, I believe, meaning he's got one more in the deck. So the last drain life, that is what he's looking for. Passing the turn to Dennis. Dennis is in for eight. That would put him on 17. Then, of course, he can start using his uh, artilleries as well to put him on 14. Yeah, so for Dennis, you're now like, okay, how can I get Anthony from 25 to zero as quickly as I can? Because I really don't want him to draw into that final drain life. So he's going to use his artilleries now to deal direct damage to Anthony. <laughs> you see Anthony gesturing there. Ooh, yeah, I cannot really do anything. So I believe this is exactly... 12 points of damage, right? So uh, dropping here to 15. What else is he going to do? Tapping quite a lot. There's an earthquake. Is he going to go for a draw? Oh, of course, he can prevent the damage. Oh, gain life with Iron Star and then he's going to lose that life. Okay, this is an interesting... Moment in the game, not quite sure if I followed what happened here. Oh, of course, I am I am such a simple man. He plays an Earthquake for zero, just plays the one red. Because it's a red spell, he can gain life again with the Iron Star. That makes perfect sense. He's back up to eight. It's a pretty good play from Dennis here. It took me a moment to realize what was going on. Gonna tap five. Oh, tap six, I guess. There's the Nightmare. Yep, six, soaring for two. I mean, this is cool. Is it going to save you? Probably not, but it's pretty cool. I mean, then again, it is one of the better options. Okay, and there's also a weakness on one of the angels. And I think the nightmare is 4-6. It's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Wow, 8-8 eight, eight nightmare. And because of that weakness, it means he can no longer double block if you attack with it. I mean, this is pretty good for Anthony. Problem for him, though, is that Dennis is back on 8, so it's going to be really difficult to kill him with that drain life. You don't have enough uh, black mana to do that. So now you need and a dark ritual and a drain life. That is really tough. So there's the attack with the single Sarah. So he kind of knows if you block it, I can kill it together with my Orcish Artilleries. I can kill your Nightmare. Nightmare is an 8-8. Eight, eight. So do you just want to take the damage here? If you take the damage, you'll drop to 11. I mean, Anthony, again, is in a really big, uh, bad spot, so he is going to block it. So Angel's going to die. He's going to use the Artillery exactly to kill the Nightmare. But I mean... What else can you do when you're Anthony? You could take the damage. He's going to deal damage with the artilleries anyway. Here we see a Juggernaut again, kind of in the glare zone. Yeah, that's much better. No, don't put... Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We know what cards they are. So we've got the Sarah Angel with the weakness on it, which is a 2-3. We've got the Juggernaut that's going to swing in for 5. I mean, Anthony's going to lose this, right? I think that Earthquake for zero play from Dennis was really good. That kind of got him out of the danger zone. Here we see a Sangir Vampire hitting the board, passing the turn. And actually a Throne of Bone would be quite good in the deck of Anthony. Yep, now he's going to use it to kill the Sangir. Hey, we can see the Sarah again. There's the attack for seven. Is it, it's for seven, right? I believe he should go to eight. He was on 15, right? Anyway, doesn't matter too much, I think. Ends up being on nine. So nine for Anthony, eight for Dennis. Passing the turn. It's, look, it's looking so good for Dennis. Is he going to be the champion here? 
Is he going to win the finals? There's the attack for seven. It's going to drop to two. He can finish it off with the artillery. There it is. Finishing it in style. Dennis here, the champion of the Alpha 40 League Europe here in Munich, Germany. Well done. And that was the video for today. Now here we can see the deck of the winner, Dennis. And what a lovely deck and what a great win here. Before we go, first a, a big thank you, a little shout out to France for reaching out to me and contact me about the Alpha 40 League Europe and about, you know, this whole match and tournament that was going on. I'm always happy to see matches from, uh, from new communities. Always excited about that. And like I said in the introduction, if you want to reach out to these guys, they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below for you to click on if you want to reach out to these guys. They're great guys and very open to new players. Um, before you go, please take a moment to uh, support the channel a little bit by liking this video, subscribing to the channel if you're not subscribed yet, commenting on this video and sharing it on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also decide to become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks to find out more about the Patreon program of Timmy Talks. And the cool thing is, if you become a patron at the $2 level, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.